Hey everyone, let's look at uh, capacitors in series and in parallel. And if you notice, my uh, spelling there was wrong. All right. So first thing is, uh, and we looked at this in our uh, video lab, I guess, um, that whatever the voltage of the battery is, is what's going to happen to the capacitor. So this capacitor is going to have a voltage across it that is equal to uh, what the battery is. Right? So if I call this V battery, this is going to have that same voltage across it. Because again, the battery is acting like a pump. It's able to push charge through the wire um, and to this plate. And it's going to fill up on that plate based upon its capacity. Uh, the negatives are going to be pulled towards those positive charges and end up static as well. So this is still a static situation. Then that charge is just stored there. If we are able to then uh, kind of cut the wire, you know, er erase it somehow. I don't know how this works. Yep, yeah, there you go. Now the charge is just going to be uh, stationary on those two plates. And nothing's really going to happen unless we attach another set of wires to that capacitor. All right, now if we add another capacitor, and I'm gonna draw it kind of funky here. So we're gonna imagine this is the battery. So let's draw the battery. Let's so it's a cell of the battery right here. And I was able to connect another wire to the end of the battery. and put another capacitor in. And we'll say it has the same value as capacitor one. Well, what's gonna happen is it's gonna have the same exact voltage of the battery because it's connected directly to the battery. So even if I was able to, uh, again, cut this wire, or can I, there we go. All right, so now that I broke that wire and that circuit to that capacitor, um, the second capacitor right here is still connected to the battery. So that's still going to pump the charge to fill up that capacitor. Build my circuit back. And I can keep doing that, uh, adding more and more wires and more and more capacitors. And this is called uh, parallel. All right, so these capacitors will be put into parallel. They would all have the same voltage across them. Because again, if you were able to snip any of those wires, uh, the other ones would still be directly uh, connected to the same points on the battery. <clears throat> and that, ba that battery would be able to push equal amounts through all of the wires. Now to draw this in a more simple way, We kind of just extend our wires from those contact points. And we can add as many of these capacitors in parallel as possible. And they would all have the same voltage of the battery across it. So if this was a 9 volt battery, there would be 9 volts across each of the capacitors. And if we knew the value of each capacitor, we would be able to figure out how much charge that is able to be stored on each of those. And they would all have the same amount, as long as they were the same capacitance. Now to figure out the total charge then stored on that circuit, you would have to be able to take the charge on this capacitor plus the charge on this capacitor plus the charge on that capacitor. And that would equal the total charge stored in that circuit. Now, here's one relationship that's important. 
Um, another relationship that's important is the voltage is constant across each branch. One more thing we need to know, which is how do we solve for the equivalent capacitance? Okay. When in parallel, uh, the equivalent capacitance, which would be if we had those three capacitors there, we could replace it with one capacitor that would have the same total amount of charge. It's called the equivalent capacitance to the addition of all of those three. Now when they're in parallel, it's pretty straightforward. It's just the capacitance of one plus the capacitance of two plus the capacitance of three up to however many capacitors that you want. All right, so it should make sense that if the charge total keeps increasing as we have more capacitors, that means that there has to be a total uh, capa capacitance greater than each of the individual. And we can probably show that in an equation, right? So if we go from Q is equal to C times V, but V is constant across each branch, right? Um, and we had Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3, that would have to equal C1V plus C2V plus C3V, which I can't fit in there. All right, and what we can get here is that this is the total charge. V is constant. So that can be factored out. Right? So to get the total amount of charge, we can put in an equivalent capacitor here and get the same amount of charge. Sorry for how sloppy that was. It was going all over the place. <clears throat> now, oops. So that's a big equation to know. I do not think, and I am wrong, that they do have that written up on our, our equation sheet, but they have it as uh, C, C parallel is equal to the sum up to whatever i of the capacitance. All right, so C parallel, which is CEQ, is the sum of however many that we have. All right, so let's look at the, the more difficult one, which is in series. Okay, so this would be when the capacitors are in series. So what's gonna happen is, um, since the positive side of the battery is here, it's going to push the positive charges through here, and they're going to build up on that capacitor right there. So we have positive charges building up here. And that's going to pull negatives this way. Okay. Uh, actually, before that, it's going to polarize these conductors right here. So it's going to pull the negatives in that conductor to this side of the plate and leaves the positives on that side of the plate and then pull the negatives in between those on that side of the plate and leave the positives on that side of the plate and that's going to pull the negatives from the battery over to here. And since they're uh, parallel plates, whatever the amount of charge is that is on this plate is going to be equal to the amount of charge here. So 
there's basically a charge separation total here. You're not adding them together. But whatever that charge is, that charge is. So whatever, this, whatever the amount of positive here is going to be the amount of positive here. is going to be the same amount of positive charge here. Right, because again, this is going to pull an equal amount of charge, leaving an equal amount of charge, pulling an equal amount of charge, leaving an equal amount of charge, and I keep repeating myself, and I think I didn't too much. All right. So what's the same across each of these capacitors now is the amount of charge. Now, there was only a certain amount that was put onto this. This is just the charge separation. Everything here is neutral. So really, there's a total charge basically just equal to whatever one of these is. All right. It's not a charge here plus a charge here. It's not plus a charge here. It's just the charge. So the charge is constant in series. property for the voltage is it's always the same as the battery between two points um, across an, a branch. So if we actually did have another branch coming this way, right, and this was a 9 volt battery. then this capacitor would have nine volts across it if there was only that one capacitor there. Now, across all three of these capacitors, it drops to nine volts, right? Because if you look, if I touch this end of the battery and that end of the battery with a um, voltmeter, it will measure nine volts. Since these are just conductive wires, if I touch anywhere on that conductive wire and this conductive wire on opposite sides of the battery, it's gonna always read nine volts, all right? It's going to read 9 volts up until there's something else that happens. As long as it's on the one side of the battery, it's always going to be 9 volts. So if I end up here and here, it's still 9 volts. But if I put the other lead here and just try to measure how much voltage is used by that one capacitor, it's going to be less than 9 volts because across the entire thing it has to be 9 volts. So this is going to use some of the voltage, the rest of the voltage, uh, more of the voltage, and the rest of the voltage. If they were all the same capacitance, this would be 3 volts, 3 volts, and 3 volts. So the total voltage across each of them is going to add together. So we now have that relationship, that the voltage is going to add up. V1 plus V2 plus V3 is going to equal the voltage of the battery. So we have Q being constant. We have the voltages adding up. So what's going to happen to our capacitance equation here? So I'm going to shrink down. That didn't work. All right, leave it as is. All right, so if we have Q is equal to C times V, and Q is constant. I want to keep the constant uh, with another variable. So I'm going to have V is equal to Q over C, right? Now, if I were to have uh, V1 plus V2 plus V3 is going to have to equal Q times 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So as we're adding those three, since C is on the bottom, I have to add it up like this. <clears throat> All right, and this would be what our equivalent would be. So V1 plus V2 plus V3 is going to be the voltage of the battery. Then we're going to have Q times this, All right, which is going to be 1 over the CEQ, which is the equivalent. All right, so 1 over CEQ equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. So let me rewrite that. 
So 1 over C EQ, is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3. And that's how you would solve for the equivalent capacitance to get the same total charge uh, just by putting in one capacitor versus those three in series. All right, so if it's in parallel, um, you just add them straight up. There's nothing fancy that happens there. But when they're in uh, series, um, this relationship gets a little tricky to work with. Um, if they are all the same capacitance, we get an, uh, a good conceptual way of doing this. So let me make up a situation. Okay, so if I had two, um, that's not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted. I wanted two in series. All right, so for a series, uh, to find the equivalent, we would have 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. And they're both two um, microfarads, which is times 10 to the negative 6. This is a common one they're going to use for capacitors. All right. So if we add that together and try to solve for CEQ, right? So 1 half plus 1 half, all right, of course gives us one. So we have a total of one microfarad, where if we were to solve for CEQ now, right, we would get that CEQ is equal to one microfarad, right? So let's see what happens if I add a third. All right, and I change the values just so we can get a sense of what's happening. So 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which equals 3 over 6, which equals 1 half, where if we now flip both sides, we get that the equivalent capacitance is equal to 2 microfarads. Right? And if we were to add another one, if we had to have four there, right? So if it was, uh, you know, add a fourth, we would get one over six microfarads again. Here we have then four over six, all right, which gives us two over three. All right, then we would flip it, we'd get three over two. All right? leave it the way it was, which was 6 over 4, you start to see that um, whatever the value of the capacitor is, so if there's 6 and you have 4 of them, you're going to take the, the value of each capacitor right here and divide it by the number of them here. And it gives it a nice easy way to combine um, any series capacitors that we are going to end up with. All right. So here we had two twos. So I have 2 divided by 2, I get 1. I have three sixes, so I take 6 divided by 3, I got 2. All right, um, all right one more quick check. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100 microfarad capacitors. All right, what is the equivalent capacitance going to be? I'm going to take the value of each capacitor, which is 100. I'm going to divide it by the number that there are. So that the equivalent capacitance here is 100 microfarads divided by 5, which gives me an equivalent capacitance of 20 microfarads. All right, so look for that. Nice conceptual questions there.